Hello my fellow lads, these scenes, Kenzie Retro here and uh, it's another episode of uh, Kenzie Retro's Reviews and oh my goodness me, where do we even begin with this one? Now, I don't normally cover this sort of, what's what I'm looking for? I don't normally cover this sort of subject matter on my channel, but it's a film that intrigued me. I have watched it and I will now review it. It's a film called Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil and Vile. It's a pretty, pretty drawn out title. But it's how the crimes of the America's most notorious serial killer, Ted Bundy, it's how his crimes were described by the judge. Now, as with my previous reviews, as with my previous reviews this year, I'm going to try and keep this as spoiler free as possible. Now, but before I get into that, you're probably wondering how I managed to get to watch this. Well, it's on Sky Cinema as a Sky Cinema original film. But in the US, it is available on Netflix. So, let's get into it. So, as I mentioned, it is as I mentioned, it is uh, a film that's based on the crimes of Ted Bundy. But interestingly, it is based on the memoir by Elizabeth Kendall, who was Bundy's girlfriend at the time. entitled The Phantom Prince, My Life with Ted Bundy. So with that, we are told this story from Kendall's perspective, which is what the director wanted to go for rather than focusing primarily on the crimes of Ted Bundy which I think is really well played because for me, there were a lot of historical points after doing some research on this, after watching the film, by the way, after I watched the film, I went to do some research and a lot of the historical accuracy in this film is pretty much on point, apart from the very final scene which, yes, in a way it did happen, but it was drama. It was, it was dramatized for cinematic purposes, which you do tend to find with most biopics. You're bound to have scenes that are dramatized for cinematic or creative purposes. Like there were some scenes in films in films that were based on true stories, like Rush and. Apollo 13, yes, based on actual events, but some scenes were dramatized for creative purposes. But you can understand why they did the historical accuracies the way they did. So overall, it's it's very interesting to see that we had this story told from Elizabeth Kendall's perspective because she is in a way completely oblivious to what's actually going on and despite the many times she tries to get the truth out of Ted Bundy he just denies it. 
Which brings me on to the casting. Now, the casting. Oh my goodness me. Now, I could just easily read out the entire cast list. So here we go. We've got, so I'm going to go from the bottom to the top. We've got Michelle Katuzjans, that's how you pronounce it, as one of the Miami jurors. James Hetfield as Officer Bob Haywood. Terry Kinney as Detective Mike Fisher. Grace Victoria Cox as Carol Donanch. Doranch. Haley Joel Osman. Ah, that's interesting that he's in there. Uh, um, fresh from uh, doing Kingdom Hearts three earlier this year. Obviously, he's been known for he's known for films like The Sixth Sense, uh, Pay It Forward. One I'd highly recommend, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks to thanks to one of my good friends. Uh, Haley Joel Osman as Jerry Thompson. Jim Parsons from Big Bang Theory as Larry Simpson. Brian Geraghty as Dan Dowd, Dylan Baker as David Yocom, Angela Sarafian as Joanna, Jeffrey Donovan as John O'Connell, John Malkovich as Judge Edward Cowart, and it was his remarks that inspired the title of the film. I would pay, I would play a video or audio clip of this, but I'm not going to because of the risk of copyright claims. Kaya Goldelario as Carol Ann Boone, who was defending Ted Bundy. I mean, at this point, I don't know why anybody would try to. Uh, Lily Collins as Elizabeth Kendall, or Liz Kendall. And then the man of the hour. Not necessarily for the right reasons. Theodore, which is... Ted's actual first name. Theodore, well, we'll just call Ted Bundy to be safe. Ted Bundy played by Zac Efron. Now, Zac Efron has had a pretty wide range of roles over the years. Debuting in the mid-2000s with High School Musical as Troy Baker. And from there, a couple of years, and then from there he went on to films like Baywatch, and he even starred in The Greatest Showman as Philip Carlyle. This, oh my goodness me, what a departure it was. With now, everybody's performances were pretty much on point, especially Zach's. And I swear on my life, it was like I was looking at two different sides of the same person. I did not know which side he was going to go to next, whether he was going to be the charismatic man that all the girls liked. Or being the psychopathic killer that everybody knew him for. I have to give a lot of praise for Zach to Zach because he was so convincing as Ted Bundy. Like I said, it was like I was looking at two different sides of Zach Efron. The casting absolutely on point. Now of course. Historical piece, so you had to get the time period right, and they did that. Everything from the costumes to the music, even the cars that were used at the time. They managed to get all that on point. Absolutely amazing job with getting the time period right, getting all the historical pieces right, the cars, the settings, the buildings, even, even the lighting as well. 
absolutely incredible how they managed to do that. And I, ca I can't really say much about the soundtrack, apart from it did leave me feeling pretty unsettled at the pivotal points in the film, be it scenes in, be it scenes in the courtroom, scenes of Ted in jail, Ted doing, going about his business at night. It's... Whew. And again, it's one of those films that was, for me, on point. So, and again, like I said, with the, um, like I said, with the, um, when I was talking about the story, the historical, historical accuracies were pretty much on point apart from the final scene, but you can understand why. But anyway, so here we go. Uh, nine for the story. 10 for the casting, 10 for visuals, 10 for the soundtrack. And it gets it gets a score of 98%. Gets a score of 98% for me. So, yeah, it is so we're not going to get it. We're not going to be able to get much out of it. We won't be able to get much out of it, but let's put it this way. It's It's a great historical it's it's a, it's a great biographical pick. It's, it's one I highly recommend. If you've got Sky Cinema, I would highly recommend you watch it. For those in the US, if you've got Netflix, which a lot of you will probably will, I will, again, this is one I highly recommend. Despite the critics saying that it glamorizes the crimes, it doesn't. It doesn't even show a majority of the crimes that Ted Bundy admitted to. It doesn't even show that. It tells the story from Liz Kendall's perspective, which works better in my opinion. But anyway, that's it for today, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. So if you did, as always, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be baptized into following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the latter day scenes notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. I have got my previous video on the left and my reviews playlist on the right. No podcast this week, but you've got but I've got a Rocket League double header for you guys to look forward to. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out, and as always, stay faithful.